<laughs> all right, well. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, just, just no putting worries. that out there. So, um, yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, promote yourself and do it. There's so much free stuff out there. Well, I hate social media. So everyone finds that a surprise. Well, I did when I started, and I'm now addicted to it. I can't. Everyone who knows me on Facebook will have five, six, seven updates a day from me just about nonsense, about nothing that's worth promoting or mentioning. But I do it anyway because I've got five minutes and I'm working anyway and something. I saw a notification, blah, blah, blah. I might as well reply to that. But there's um, Twitter. I've just got on Instagram. It's all really, really useful uh, stuff, and it's all free. That's the main point. The first year of Chaos Theory, I didn't have a website. I didn't have an email address. I used MySpace. I put a link to, I put a, had a player with the bands that we were featuring at our gigs, a track by each of them on the MySpace player. The email address was chaostheory at myspace.com, and uh, it was just MySpace messaging. So attachments didn't work all the time. It looked really awful, and, uh, but it was free, and I, that was what I worked with. Facebook, same thing. Twitter, this is all free. You don't have to spend any money on it. Use it. Get good at Learning, I mean, you get so many talks like Tommy's, like the Darker Music talks, about people who teach you how to effectively use this stuff. Because I know Facebook has changed the way it works, so only 5% of your followers will see stuff, but there are ways you can manipulate that. And I do that. And it just takes time and persistence. And only now is it starting to actually be fairly useful. And only now am I starting to get fans at gigs who. How do you do that? How do you a, a, a huge list of ways. I mean, a uh, little. Tell me one. Tell you one. Okay, right. Instead of. Embedding a link, you can, you know, which shows the picture of the link, delete that and just show the text of it. So Facebook will show the text to more people. Simple. But it looks more boring, so less people might click on it. So it's, uh, you know, had. I, I, found that. Sorry, I found that if I, if I put up just text, I get yeah. a lot less people interacting with it. If I, have, yeah. if I have like a kind of fun picture or something, just it's inundated. Even if it's crap, it's like people, people just, people, people jump on pictures like really fast. A lot more than text. Well, I think I, that's, that's a key. No, that's, that's right. I mean, the thing is, you've all got very individual audiences, and you've got to learn your audience. You've got to learn what they like. And more importantly, what I was saying to Genia just outside is that you've got to learn to reach people that aren't like yourself. That's where most people fall down. I wouldn't do that, so there's clearly no point in it. Other people do. Instagram, what's the point? I don't know, but I just went to Kuwait and put on a concert there, and they don't use Twitter or Facebook. They hardly use it, but they're all about the Instagram. Within two hours of opening an Instagram account, I had 22 followers, and people were just starting to share our stuff and buzz about the concerts and share things around, and it's just ridiculous how much they love that stuff. But you've got to realize that there are other people who are not like you, but they would be interested in your music. So you've got to get good at reaching people and getting habits and learning the habits of other people. It's not that hard. People make too much of a thing about it. You can get too analytical. Uh, just simply just be yourself. Use it as you would a personal Facebook account. Just put up stuff about yourself occasionally, about your music, about your gigs, a new release here and there. Keep people engaged. Just be personable, and they will find you over time. It'll pick up. It'll just pick up. Just keep at it. Don't give up. Like anything in the creative industry, it'll get easier with time and less and less difficult. I thought I saw a hand going up there, but no, you were just stretching, that's fine. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, also um, networking, something Tommy's very good at. Tommy's built the reputation of darker music talks on charisma, and that's about it. That, that's the recipe, people. <laughs> Get charisma, buy charisma. Charisma. Talking big, going up to people, talking about, huh? He has a beard as well, that, that's the key to success. Uh, I've only just gotten into beards, and my business has boomed since then. So yeah, so yeah, so there we are. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, essentially, network. Uh, why? I, why? I see some people who are musicians, and they never go to gigs. Why? <laughs> why? why? Uh, like, uh, you got to go out there and meet other bands, and see what other bands are doing, and get. Like I just said, got London's culturally rich. So go and meet the other musicians, see what they're doing. I always go to loads of gigs all the time. Many times I'll go to two or three in a night, uh, hopping between gigs. And um, there's always something to learn from all of them. And uh, you know, everyone has different ideas, and everyone does things in different ways. And you always have a good time. But there's always something. I never go to. I rarely go to a gig where there isn't at least one band that I really enjoy, even if I don't like the whole lineup in general. There's always something you can do. As a musician, 
You should be going out there and talking to the ones you like, talking to the ones you think you'd fit the bill with. I see loads of musicians coming to me now, the really savvy ones will come to me and say, oh, yeah, we'd be really, oh, yeah, well, if you're struggling to find a band, I know you like to do your own lineups, but we just played a gig with these guys, we think they'd be really good. And obviously, because they're mates, they're more excited about playing together, they're going to promote the gig more, and, you know, they're just taking a little bit more control over the situation. You should be doing that. You should be, if you don't, I mean, I'm not scolding people, I'm sure you're all, you do lots of, uh, go to lots of gigs, but, uh, Go to lots of gigs and make sure that you um, take time to see what other people are doing. Don't be so inwardly focused about your own music and your own project because you can forget about the bigger picture and you can forget about the fact that, again, it is just fun. We are finding friends here. Okay? We can get too worried and too stressed or just too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy with my own music. Go and make friends. This is a great opportunity. People, all of you people who are here are probably here because you are here to network. I'm sure a lot of you are chatting and swapping cards. Um, so definitely get each other's numbers, find out what each other does. Yes, Tommy? Yeah, me again. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> chat um, around. Have you heard of the book, uh, just raise your hands, have you read the book uh, How Music Works from David Byrne? That's great. There is a chapter that is talking about how you, you make a scene. Is that the name of the chapter? How you create a scene? So he was talking essentially that in New York when he was young and he started gigging and playing, you know, in, in these historical venues now. Essentially, this is what was happening. What are you talking about? The, uh, the bands, they were talking with each other and they were creating something that is collaborative. It was, no, it was no such thing like competition, you know, like each band was reinforcing the reputation of the other band. And let's say, you know, somebody here is playing metal. They were finding another band that plays the same kind of music and they were collaborating. So they were exchanging audiences. Um, this is something that I feel really bad about, let's say, personal confession. I think that bands in London, in general, it's not, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about others, people that are not in the room. But in general, I've seen that they see things quite competitively, and they try to, to, to gain, you know, in, like, against somebody else. I mean, we're not, this, is, this is not a, like, a, um, a, um, what was the word? English, okay, tired in English, that's, that's really bad. Anyways, here there's no like, such thing, as everybody can be a winner. That, that's what I'm talking about. So the thing is all about re reaching out to people, what you talk about, going to gigs, reaching out to people and then asking them, okay, let's do this together. Because this is what it's all about. Myself now, okay, it's not self-promotion, but I'm putting these things for free. And I'm co here people are getting connected. This is not about me again, this is not about oh, how great I am, and this is not about even you or even about you. It's about the discussion, it's about collaboration, it's about sharing. And then if, if this mindset is ingrained, if the, the default mindset, if, if, it is, if it is collaboration, then I guess that things start changing. And I've seen like this beautiful community, it, it's all about the collaboration. People come here to network, to learn and have common goals. Th this can apply to every kind of industry, you know? Gaming industry, music industry, writers, I don't know. So. I, th I think we need to rethink th this thing, and maybe we can create like another um, event about how you, how we should reapproach the live performances with some practical solutions. You know, everybody can suggest their own solutions, can prepare the homework. I don't know if you find a nice idea. We can go in a cafe and we can start doing this. But I think we need to reapproach the way we collaboratively, collaboratively approach live performances. I'll, I'll be doing this all the time, so I'm going to stop. That. Good. No, I mean, that's one thing I've really, that's a really good point because, well, before I joined this, this life four years ago, before I came into it, I, I still do, I love competition. I love it. I love healthy competition and people see it as a negative thing. Uh, but I love, I would love if another promoter came to me and said, I'm going to double the audience numbers that you had next month and I'm, I'm going to make sure that my promotion, I'd, be, I'd love that because that would push me, but in a healthy way. So what you really want, which is what Tommy's saying is inspiration definitely go and meet other musicians and see, yeah, accept that they are better at some things than you. Find out what they're better than you at. Make sure you do and learn from it. And at the same time, push yourself to take that on board with what you already think you're better than them at. And only then will you excel, okay? What people I've seen, what I've seen some, when I first started especially, there were a lot of small promoters who would see everything as a threat and a competition and you know, people don't share contact details of other bands because, oh, no, they're my band. I'm like, no band wants to play with one promoter. I share details all the time to other promoters um, of bands and vice versa, you know. Uh, why not? Because um, they want to play different gigs. It doesn't mean I'm, my gig's going to do worse. Same with a band. When I'm in a band, I would go and meet other people, and it's not like we're competition. We want to play together. We want to inspire each other. Sure, yes, they're better. Oh, you shouldn't have this attitude that they, they might make me look bad. You should have this attitude that 
we'd be honoured to be on a bill with them and we could learn a few things. So you're absolutely right. I think that you should take inspiration and push yourself all the time. Um, I don't know if how, I don't feel that I need to tell all of you all of this because I'm sure you're here because you you already think like this. Um, but I'd say one major major important point is play the numbers. And by that, I mean that everything is a numbers game in the sense that you can be doing all of this and you can be doing everything right and you'll still be knocked back and you'll still be rejected many, 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 many times. And that's okay. It's a competitive world out there. There are a lot of bands competing for one slot. So you should really not let that discourage you you should definitely focus your attentions, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to keep doing If you do everything right, it's like a, a job interview. I mean, you can do everything right in this day and age, but you might not get the first few jobs because there's somebody who's just more right for the role, you know? Uh, but you keep doing it, keep doing it. Pay attention to detail for all of those things, your image, your profession, your recordings, your, your website, your photography, whatever, however you want to present yourself, and make sure that you keep attention to detail and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing and it'll get easier and easier and easier as the opportunities will start rolling in, okay? Um, so I'm a largely unsigned promoter, generally dealing with unknown independent musicians. So I'd say um, there are many, many reasons that bands want to play a gig. Why, why do you guys play gigs? I want people to give me reasons as to... To build up a fan base, okay? That's, because you, you enjoy it. Okay, sorry, what was that at the back? To try out the songs. To try out the songs. Okay, very good. To try out the songs. Because you hate it. <laughs> yeah? Just, uh, just, just a bit of a masochist, yeah? No, I'm not trying to get to the point where I don't hate it anymore. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's very important. Yes? For the thrill of music, live music is the best music. I completely agree. Live music is the best music. Are we... Is that any more? Tom? Is it Tom, by the way? Is your name Tom? My name's Dan. Dan, hello, Dan. Hi. All right. <laughs> can, can I just ask the rumor question? You know, we're talking about um, we're talking about online stuff. We're talking about getting you know bigger audiences, etc., etc., etc. Who is actually putting in real time with the actual initial product, like with the songs? Because so many of us are looking to cut corners where <laughs> where you know it's it that's cool, but if you're actually not working on your initial product, which is your songs and your music, and you're doing everything around it, that's cool. But your initial product, like you might say, you know, you're kind of doing the same thing, you're doing all the right things, but you're still not getting any further. Is that because your initial product needs work? Do you have to step back from it all and actually work on your songs? And that's a harsh thing to say, and you're gonna have to like swallow that bit of pill, some of you, but I've had to do that many, many times. The amount of demos, you want to talk about demos, I said yeah. to my label that they've said, no, it's crap. I'm like, are you, you, you insane? That's a hit. Yeah. Sometimes I've gone, and, 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 and I'll say this, sometimes I've known, it's a, I've known it's a hit, and it's just been a bad recording. And, it, and I've sneaked them in under the, under the radar and recorded them in a professional studio, and it's made loads and loads of money for them, and that's fine. But the initial songwriting it had to be there from, from the get-go. I've, I've written tons of tripe that I believed in, but you know, is, do you have to sort of go away and actually start thinking about your, you know, very critically about your own stuff? Because we all think that we're great. And that's good, you should. You should think you're the best, you know, you're the best uh, band in the world. You should think that you're the greatest artist because you need to have that self-confidence. But if you're just churning out and you think everything you're doing is gold, you're wrong. And that's it. So, to, you know, I don't know if that's a question or if that's just me. You know, you know, having like some big sort of thing. I think you've got a response. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I, I must agree with it. At the other hand, I'm, I'm usually, oh, sorry, Daniela. Uh, I'm Hello, usually yeah. very much wondering uh, what is wrong with the general consciousness, with the musicians thinking, as you said as well, that we are closed in our own rooms and not communicating with other artists. Because out there, we need people that will help us and not only in music, not only in production, not only in studios. We need people that will help us with the designs, with the webs, with uh, outfits, looks, styles. So I just don't understand why don't we more get networks, get together, help each other to make an image out of everything. Because in that way we are helping designers, we are helping visual artists. 
they are helping us back. We are each other's cards. So and uh, if we are all at the very beginning, of course, this initial project that, that will help us be much faster, much further, especially now in these times when we realize that it's more and more hard to earn our money from it. So we have to find other ways, and I think that it will be better for us, you know, thinking this way. Cheers. It's kind of a response to what you were saying. Um, I, I make music videos, um, and I run a video production business, but I'm also a musician, and the amount of times I've had musicians say, oh, um, come and do us a music video, uh, it'll be good for your portfolio, and, and uh, it, it, it can't work like that, it can't be about, um, if everyone was to help each other, no one would make a penny, and uh, it's, it's difficult to know where that line is, um, when you, you know, you're talking about getting everyone to help each other, how is it positive for the, uh, it's like if the web designer said to you, come play at my wedding. I'd like to respond to that as well, Tom. Sorry to cut you off there, Daniela. Uh, um, both of you are making a good point, and I think there's a, it's the way you approach it. Uh, no, you shouldn't go and keep doing free stuff for exposure, but this is an industry built on favors. I mean, we get mates to record, at least to start us off, and that's the whole point with starting off. All the people who help out with chaos theory, there's loads of them now. It was just me for two years running, doing all this, um, trying to do all of it by myself. And now we've got people who do the artwork, if the web, you know, we've got people who uh, do the photography, who promote, who do all kinds of other stuff, who do recording, do filming, do photography, do other scout for bands that I know nothing about, who help out on little things like doing the merch stand, the door, people who do the website. And you know what? Nearly all of them started off doing it for free. And the whole point is, is that we use it. We make sure that we make a product that we're proud of, and I make sure that I advertise them to everyone I can, so that they can get money, use that as a springboard to make money elsewhere. So you're right, you shouldn't undervalue yourself, but pick the projects you do carefully. Because yeah, don't just do free stuff all the time, but yes, okay, this project is a potential opportunity which I can use to proudly present. Cognitive Dissonance, uh, Hannah and Dan, who did um, the website, they did it for next to nothing compared to their usual rates because they were just starting out and now they use it as a CV for other big projects which they get paid a lot for, anything to do website design. So yes, don't undervalue yourself at all, Tom, but be smart about, and be realistic. I mean, if you're talking to, if you're all getting together and doing, you know, you're gonna need a whole stuff, uh, you know, you're gonna need a package. You're gonna need photography, recordings, uh, film footage, or whatever you need, whatever you want to present yourself as a new musician. Get with all these other creative people who are also trying to carve a niche out in their own field and use it to launch each other and make work that you're proud of. Make sure you only take on free work that you would be proud to do. What about bartering? I mean, you could say, I, I'm, I'm doing, I'll do this for you if you do this. Everybody can hear me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, vi they're videoing it, so oh, um, we've got to be. <laughs> um, I, I will do the video for you if you um, play at a gig free of charge. That's part of my promotion, just swapping without any money, exchanging hands. That's one way around it. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I love bartering. Screw the tax man. Um, why should money exchange hands if you can just swap services? Yes, Jenny. Oh. You want the mic? Tommy, come on. What are you doing? Um, I, I'm really, really, really into the whole bartering thing as well. I love that, the whole free economy thing, all that. But um, there's a, a slight... Uh, like twerk of psychology that makes when you work for free or when you ask someone to work for free people do not take it as seriously when you give somebody money to do something for you it's an instant contract that makes people it, they have to do it they have to do it to their best abilities you're not pissing around it's not a favor you're doing it for money it's your job um, so when you get to the point where you're trying to do something that's of genuine real quality, you either have to really trust the person who's, who's doing this thing for you for free, or you've got to give them money, and, and then, you know, you're serious. <laughs> I'd say pick your projects carefully. All yeah. these guys, they made, they didn't, they didn't put in as much effort initially as they would with other projects, but then they started seeing rewards. Then they started seeing reputation. Then some of them have started getting bigger projects because of it, and that made them start taking it more seriously and putting more effort in. You've got to make it pay people off, and they should make it pay off for you. You know, it's, a, it's an exchange of services, and it's, 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 it's a, an exchange of reputation, essentially. Uh, do you have a question, Lena? No, I didn't think All right. I should get I around the whole thing. thing. London's full of film schools. It's full of 
uh, art schools for people who actually need to do it for their schoolwork. So you can always uh, piggyback on those. You can, yes. Uh, obviously, you know the people, you know your project. I mean, be mindful of the quality you'll get and make sure that you trust the people. Uh, yes. Right. Um, I just wanted to answer your question. I personally think that, you know, I've come across musicians um, that, you know, session musicians that will do a fantastic job if they're getting paid. If they're not getting paid, then obviously they're not going to do as well as job. Same goes for artists and graphic designers and anything more in the art field. Um, but I think it comes down to the person, really, the individual person. If you're doing a gig for free and you believe in what you're doing, and you know, you know, as a singer songwriter myself, if I'm going to do a gig, I'm going to perform as though I'm getting paid. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any difference to me. I'm going to make the audience believe in what I'm singing. And that comes down to professionalism and being professional. If you find people that are professional in what they do, then you won't have that problem. I've come across people that are not professional and are professional, and there's a difference. So you just have to find the right people. Good. Well, I think I should move on to the point. Just, just a moment, oh, like to oh, answer no, to right. that point, fine, exactly. Yeah. That's so think about this. Now you're coming here for free. Nobody obliged you to be here, but no, nobody made you pay, right? So how is this working? So there is something like a secret, the secret sauce, you know, that everybody's forgetting. It's about believing in what you do so much that you have a system in place and you're patient enough to make it work for free in the first stages. So essentially, this one is not... This is what I do. If, believe it or not, this is my main thing. But right now, I don't make any money at all. Why? Because right now, we're expanding in 13 more countries with the same concept. It's, it's going to be a franchise. And this way, making cuts from each place, this is going to make a very good turnout in general. And everybody involved in this, they're going to be paid. So it's all about having a system, knowing that you're going to start making some investment, and then it's going to be some, some way of making profit. But you need to know exactly what this is. This is why, if Andre was here, he would be talking about business models. It's about having the business model. In the beginning, it starts with some for free, the investment. Some people go and get money from investors. They, they borrow money. But eventually, it's knowing where you want to go, what you said at the beginning, the goals. Yeah. There is there's just so many people. One, two, three, four. Uh, how much want to time say something? do we have? Because um, I'm happy to go on for a while, but if uh, I... We need, we need to complete your questions at the end, or do you want to? Um, according to this one, it's like half an hour more, but okay, depends on the discussion if there is value. Okay, so you want to say oh, something? Yeah. How are you doing? My <laughs> name is Warhol. People call me Oli. I, <clears throat> I wanted to answer something that we were talking. I think that there is a little difference when you are like performing, we can say, for free, or we can ask well, when you are like giving a service or you are asking for a service. And for example, uh, money started as a way of exchange. You know, people change cow for chickens, and they say, "Okay, how we can do this like better?" We develop money, and we, we change money. But money is not the only way of making an exchange. You know, that I, I will tell something that I started today, and I think I'm, I'm, because I'm thinking of this, I run supper clubs here in London. I cook for people, and I need like a, something, somebody who takes picture because I'm trying to build a book. Every Saturday. So what I, what I thought, I can't pay uh, somebody to come every Saturday. I will offer something in exchange. I'm not offering mentoring. I will. I, I, I post an ad asking not for any photographer, but photographers interested in food that they like to cook, and I will exchange my mentoring to how to run a supper club for her photos. It works for both with no money, in, so you can always find something because money is. Fuck. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> barter, barter, yeah. always barter. All right, so uh, yeah, just to go back to all the different reasons you said that you can play gigs, um, I think that they're really, they're all great reasons. I mean, we play gigs because we like it, we play gigs for gigging experience. Uh, somebody said that. You play because you want to get new audiences, uh, you want to make money out of it, or you want to sell merch. And I think this is where it's crucial absolutely crucial that bands think about who they're approaching because of the reason that they're playing the gig. I get so many people, I'm, I work particularly with artists who want to make a career out of it, but sometimes you get somebody who just wants to play pubs uh, and they just want to have a laugh and they approach me and then they can't, 
not very often, but occasionally somebody might get a bit precious about the fact that I said we don't quite work with that kind of artist. They're like, why not? Why not? I mean, and I'm like, well, we don't do this, that, and the other. Likewise, I've seen artists who want to make a real career out of it playing in some old Irish pub, and they're playing some electronic down tempo trip hop stuff in the middle of these old toothless Irish men <laughs> strumming on a guitar out of tune. I'm like, why did you play that gig? That's not your demographic, that's not your audience. So you've got to know why you're playing each gig, and then Pick your promoters, research them. Go to, if they have Facebook, the websites, or whatever, whatever they have, check them out. Check out the kind of bands they work with. Check out the kind of bands on the lineup. Uh, go to some of the gigs. Just take some time and uh, make sure that you get to know the kind of gigs that you go to. I'm more likely to work with bands who email me and say, "Hi, I've been to a couple of your jazz markets and we really like the style. We, uh, this artist stood out to me, and I play this kind of thing." And is it that shows me that it's personal? They've taken a bit of research as opposed to sending out a blind carbon copy bunch of emails to a whole load of promoters. You know, if you're playing for fun, then don't approach people who are taking a professional standing on their gigs. And if you're playing professionally, then don't approach those promoters who are basically just doing it for a laugh. You know, I mean, you've got to really take a bit of thought into the kind of gigs, and then you'll all find it much less frustrating just by dividing it. Uh, also, take you know, people take part in competitions and things like that, uh, Battle of the Bands and various things. I mean, I've seen people get disappointed about losing a Battle of the Bands that wasn't right for them. I mean, if you're an indie rock band and you're playing, you're the best band down the lineup, but it's a folk competition, and the other bands are not as good as you, but they're folk, one of them's going to win, why would you be disappointed? It wasn't right for you. So you've got to, you've got to think about, you know, what, what, is the, what is their target? What kind of bands are they looking for? I mean, don't just go for everything, because unless... You want to do gig experience. These two are in a band called Open Sight, and they played Metal to the Masses, and they managed to sell a couple of CDs, I think, didn't you, or some merchandise. I mean, so they had foresight to take merchandise regardless. It was a battle of the bands. I've heard bands say before, uh, I'm not, well, it's a battle of the bands. I don't need to sell merch. It's not that kind of gig. Why? Take everything. Take stuff you, you made, I don't know, what, 20, 30 quid or something there. Just, but, you know, I mean, like, there was an outcome. You know, there was a positive outcome. You've got to value yourself. You've got to take merch everywhere. So, um, first, yeah, so I would say, um, yeah, take a bit of thought into the type of gig you want, depending on what reason you want to play. And these reasons will change, develop. At first, you want gigging experience. You're doing it for fun. Maybe later you want to start playing and getting to network with other bands and playing on more bills that you take a bit more seriously and then maybe start moving a bit of merchandise or, you know, getting... You don't have to have merch to, for sale. You can have free stuff, just stuff with your name on it so people will remember who you are. Oh, who was that girl on the bill the other day? She really... Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, that's lost forever. You've just lost that potential fan. Why would you not put something in their hand that has your name and website or whatever on them, you know? Just do it. I mean, um, again, in, a, in Kuwait... Uh, Bella Cardassus had just sold out all of the CDs, so she didn't have any to take to Kuwait. And they were mad for it. They were buying everything after the gig. Cause, yeah, so uh, we just literally made up a flower on my laptop, sent it to the hotel, got them to print a whole load, and we just sat there and cut them out just before the gig. And loads of people took them. And that was it. You know, just something. Just something to latch on to the audience, OK? Um, so yeah, that's sort of related to my next point, which is be prepared to advertise your own gigs. A lot of people have told me, Initially, not so much now. Bands that take it seriously tend to get that they, w they need to promote themselves. But it's not a case of the promoter does nothing. But they often say, well, we thought you're the promoter. You do all the work. I've heard that. Or the promoter should do the promoting. Yes, but you know, a lot of people don't care what the promoter has to say. You've got fans. They want to listen to you. They want to hear what you have to say. So yeah, tell people about it. You don't have to go mad. But make it easy for them to find out about your gigs. Put them on your website. Don't if you've got a website or a band camp, update it. Don't just have a band camp but only update the Facebook. Update everything. Just make it easy for fans to know about your stuff. I've had bands get really proactive. Like, well, I'm like, whoa, slow down. They're like, I've had bands, a band today who I booked, um, and they sent me their own poster. Hey, we made this poster for you. We've got this. We'd like this lineup. We, we were thinking of this guy on the, as a DJ. We were thinking of this, and I'm like, whoa, 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 I've got some of that sorted. Don't worry. Like, uh, but it's great. They've got energy. They've got drive, and they're going to go far because they have got a really good sound and a really good product, which comes first. I mean, everyone's dream is just we make really good music. That should be enough. That should speak for itself, and everything should happen for us. But you should start with that, definitely, Dan, all the time. Because um, so many people don't look at their sound, and I do tell everyone in Chaos Theory, when we're looking at bands, would you actually buy that? Would you, if you'd never heard of them and you weren't thinking of booking them, would you buy that? You should, you should do that with your own music. Would I actually pay money? Would I pay 30 quid to see this band at a gig? Would I buy that CD? If not, then start there. But once you've got that, then definitely value 
and you know everything that you do and advertise it and promote it and think about it and take control take control of your own destiny F make it easy suggest other bands that could work with you you know um all kinds of different ways that you can take control of the gig and make it your own event make it an event that you're excited about that you would want to promote anyway it shouldn't be a chore you should only pick gigs that you would be excited about being on the bill for. If you're not excited about it and you feel like you're being pressured to promote it, then you shouldn't be playing it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be on that bill because it's not... It sh I mean, the bands should be excited about playing uh, on Together. Does that make sense? Yeah? So I think that's... Uh, sorry, a real for a minute, I would like to, to ask a question. So has anybody else played um, a concert that you organise it fully, 100% yourselves, in a different place, not a bar? Okay, who would like to share this experience? Because most people, they don't have full control of what's happening. It's the yeah. bar. Yeah. So I would like to hear somebody. Yeah? yeah. yeah. What do you want to know? Just tell us your experience about this, about having control of everything, the context, you know, who's coming in, the organization. Sure. Um, well, I, I booked um, my own headline tour about two years ago, um, and that involved booking uh, seven venues booking um, each act at each city for those venues, running the night and then being, being the bad guy, being the promoter, saying to the bands, you haven't got any people, and then trying to be the good guy at the end, getting on stage. And yeah, it's really hard. Is that, is that the point you wanted to get to? It's really hard. It was. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Um, the, yeah the, the good side of it was, um, if I hadn't have done it, it wouldn't have happened. So uh, it was the fact that I got something done and we had a tour on our, on our books um, and that we got people to those shows. And if we hadn't have done it at all, we wouldn't have been doing it. Yeah, well done. No, that's completely what I'm on about. Take control of your own situation. Yeah. Why wait for other people in every city to try and book you and then try and get on a bill that maybe you're not happy with? Book it yourself. Do it yourself. And yes, yeah, sometimes you have to make unpopular decisions, but you know they're for the right reason. Mm. And it worked out. But what, what I would have done next time was to get even just anyone, someone who can do a little bit of admin, to then come along and actually be that promoter. You, you, you can tell them what to do, but just so they're that, that, the face of the show, so you're not the guy who's the bad guy running around like a stressed business person, and then having to jump up on the stage and convince everyone, actually, I'm not, I'm not a cunt, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's basically <laughs> what I do, that. yeah. How did it go? <laughs> um, it went well. It went well. Yeah, well yeah. done. Still, still, no, still that's, playing. That's good. So. Well done, man. Oh, get you next time. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Massa. Hey, Massa. Um, I'm in a, a duo called OARC. and uh, we've been. Uh, what, I'm playing with another guy. Uh, plays electric guitar. I, I do. Uh, I play acoustic guitar and sing as well. And we are making some kind of music which is kind of song-based, kind of ambient pop music, which usually it's, it's quite um, uh, no, no drums, no bass. So it's quite um, mellow stuff. And um, we've been playing with uh, some kind of very, very kind of a mainstream pop acts or some, some indie bands, and which is not appropriate. So I don't want to make any excuse that it is not appropriate, but we uh, did an experimentation that we organized our own event called OWAC Presents, and we chose two acts which we liked. And we chose um, the cafe in West Hampstead uh, because they have all the equipment, so we don't need to hire it. Um, also, they don't charge us any hiring fee, so this way we can have, our, 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 have our, our own space. And also it is a cafe, so there's just the tables and uh, uh, seats, and they can just uh, relax uh, with, the, with the music we, we generate, actually. So um, you know, there's a food avail available, and um, the drinks uh, available. Um, obviously, you have to uh, pay for that. So we create kind of a nice bit of a candlelit atmosphere, and so it worked really well. And one of my friends, who is really into our music, said um, that's the atmosphere he, he really wants to listen to our music. And I, and, and I really appreciate this, um, his uh, comment. But also, uh, th 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 there's some kind of a negative side of this. Because we're presenting, uh, so I have to introduce each act, and I'm not really good at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't mind p performing, but uh, say something in like a sentence is, is not good for me. So my presentation is kind of like shaky, maybe not smooth, but 
um, we are the one who organized it, so I have to do it. So um, it was kind of like a bit of a distraction before uh, we start playing it. And, and also we have to make sure that, um, you know, like um, cafe owner is happy about bar takings and food takings. And I have to think about it as a musician. <laughs> and it's just quite, quite frustrating. But, you know, make sure that um, we have to promote well. And also we have to bring some kind of an act which also uh, quite, quite confident to bring enough people in and then we chose that act so so at the end of the night um, the, the owner of the cafe is happy about uh, you know but the money uh, he made and um, we had a good re re uh, feedback from other you know like uh, the people so it went really well but it's quite uh, tough work as well 